right, so let's talk about inlet and outlet work. One note I want you to really, really take into consideration that we will always use positive values, even though inlet and outlet, by definition, will not make you sense like how do you add an inlet work and how do you add an outlet work. Well, if we define this equation, the left side are all the inlet work or energies and the right side we find all the energies that go out of the system. So of course you could do this, I don't like this form, it's kind of mathematically, uh, this one is a little bit more, let's say logical, makes more sense. So ignore this part right here, which of course it's important, but for the analysis, I just want to show you that you will need a pump to satisfy all the energy losses, or if we have, let's say we don't have a pump, but we have a very nice system which is very high on the A system, which let's say for example the dam I showed you before, we have A and we have B, we could take turbines. We put a turbine and we take out energy of the system. But actually we are more concerned on the use of pumps here, turbine is not an issue right now, we are more interested in moving fluids, not on taking this is more for a dam engineer or something like that. So left side is positive inlet work. On the right side is negative outlet work. When I, what I mean work is essentially, once again, energy per unit mass. So let's talk about the inlet work. Actually it's just pumps. The, you might find many devices that take or add work to the system, but the most common one you're going to buy or use is pumping. Uh, any type of system that at works in an external manner. So external is key to the understanding because we have our system which is P, P and height equals P, P and height. But many times guys, this will be greater than this. So you need to add a pump in order to change the conditions. Okay. One thing we will be using along the course is the efficiency of the pump because you add energy, let's say electricity, you add let's say 100 watts but the efficiency of that pump is, I don't know, maybe 60%. What does that mean is that 40% is going as heat energy or sound, vibration and so on. Only 60% is going to the system. So even though we are adding a lot of electrical energy we care on the energy that's going actually inside the system. So actually, if we were adding 100 joules, we were, or we will only consider this 60 right here, because it's the actual amount that is going to the system. The other 40% is being lost. So it's very useful to multiply efficiency. Recall that the work of a pump in the system will be always less of that work added by electricity. Don't worry, we're going to make a lot of exercises later. Just This is just a theoretical concept. So how can we find outlet work? Essentially, turbines, uh, windmills, or water mill, whatever, that takes out energy of the system. This is also external. So this means it doesn't care about PV, velocity in B, and height of B. The efficiency will not be affected in our system, so maybe if someone tells you the efficiency of a turbine is 90% and if they tell you they are taking out six or 100 joules, well, even though you're only using 90% to produce energy, the system is losing 100 joules. This is what is matters for us. For example, if someone takes you 100 dollars away, you don't care he uses ninety dollars, twenty dollars, or how he uh, use it, you are losing hundred dollars. So this is what important or is important for us. Uh, typically the work of the turbine is the work going out of the system. As I tell you, we care on this amount, not on the amount being produced. So maybe it's kinda abstract inlet out of work, let's make 
and especially the efficiencies because every system has efficiency. Even turbines have efficiency, pumping has efficiency. For example, let's see this example. 50 kilowatt pump, how much is actually getting into the system if the efficiency is about 65%. So the work actually going into the system is efficiency times the, pot, uh, the power of the pump. So 65%, let's change that to fraction, times 50, we get 32.5 kilowatts. So get access to plenty of problems, go to the practice section right here and you will be able to see that I have plenty of problems. Actually, I got almost 140 problems about friction, pumps, uh, mechanical energy equation, Reynolds number, pressure drop, all relevant to mechanical energy is here. Empty and tank to Richelli's law, Reynolds law, and so on. So go and register and you will have access to plenty of problems right here. Actually going into the system, the other, I think it's about 18 kilowatts is being lost. Wait for it. Okay, that's inlet work. So what happens if we want to produce 6 megawatts from the, let's say it's dam. We have A, we have B. And the efficiency of the turbine is 90%. How much are we taking out of the system? Well, even though If we are taking out of the system, we are producing 6 megawatt, we require that, we need to divide it by efficiency because this is what we want to produce. So in order to produce this, we need to divide this and you will get the actual amount that you're taking away of our system. So you take away this and this is lost for the system. So the system already lost 6.67 megawatts and you are producing electricity or mechanical energy in the dam of 6 megawatts. This 90% is critical, especially when they tell you this value. But normally we, we are going to get this value. They will tell you the system loses this amount of energy due to outlet work. And once again, don't worry guys, this is just a concept. We are going to work a lot with efficiencies on pumping system and on turbines. And I like to call this your always crew role. So for example, if you need to supply electricity to a pump system, you will always need more electricity than the required work or power. And also if you ima imagine your business is to produce electricity, if you have a turbine and want to generate electricity, you will always generate less electricity of what you are using. So once again, you are always screwed because there's efficiency losing. For example, I lose efficiency, not all energy goes into the system and not all the energy I take out of the system goes to electricity. So a small summary. It's for the pump, it's for outlet work. So in all cases, either you're producing or you're uh, generating energy or consuming energy, you're pumping, etc. You always expend more energy than the system requires. That's the moral of the story. Please learn it. Always calculate for the worst case scenario. But once again, don't ever use negative works. If they tell you, I take away 100 joules, please use 100 joules, never use negative, use positive. If they tell you, I add 100 joules, well, of course, use positive. If you add 100 joules, means you are in the left side. If you are taking out 100 joules, means you are in the right side. So look why we have here the efficiency, and here we don't have efficiency. Um, yeah, essentially that's what I wanted to show you. This is the typical Bernoulli equation parameters. We just saw inlet and outlet work. How do they work? It's funny, how do they work? And we are only left with the friction loss. So there's nothing to conclude, but let me do this in the next. This was a free preview. You want to get 
full access, go to my incompressible flow course. The link is in the description of the video. You will get all access. Not only that, you get a very straightforward, uh, user-friendly interface. So, for instance, if you were analyzing or studying pumps, you have it here. The pump block. And then you have the sections. If you were, for example, studying the types of pumps, you can go here, and you have all the classes right here. Not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these. So for instance, if you were studying positive displacement pumps, the video is right here. If you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.